Hello everybody, welcome to Owen Automotive. This is episode five of the Preservation E-Type. Let's get into it. Yeah, we've got a few things to put in before this engine's running. Really have attached nothing since it got installed aside from the mounts. So there's a lot of systems to put in, as I said earlier, but just gonna do a tour. So this is where the heater box will sit and the battery as well. Now there, I put some rust converter down in there. I'm gonna have to paint some gray paint in there. Just found a slight bit of surface corrosion from the battery area. That's pretty common. Uh, the braking system's been completely rebuilt. There's no real system that has been untouched in this car. It's gonna be mechanically zeroed. This is the suspension that's been completely rebuilt, cadmium plated, that's a new stub axle in there. It's a far cry from what it looked like when we were taking it apart a few episodes ago. Now, right here is where the cooling system will be. We have a great, amazing radiator. I can't wait to show everybody to install on this side. And of course the exhaust is missing. So we're gonna put on the original exhaust manifolds. That's gonna be cool. And the brake reservoirs also will go in this area. Let's have a quick look at the other side. Here we are on the passenger side. Of course, the triple carbs are missing. We'll put those on. Also got to put the oil filter housing on the engine down there as well. Now there's a line here. It runs from the water pump. It's a coolant line that runs underneath the carburetors to the firewall tubes. Now I'll take the coolant to and from the heater mechanism and the heater control valve. So I've got to get that set up before the carbs go on. Yeah, and yeah, of course, I got to put the air filter housing and intake plenium on as well. Lots to do in this engine bay. Let's get started. Yeah, next up, I want to put the oil filter housing in. Here's the filter itself. It's just a paper element and a large cartridge here. The housing has a takeoff for the sanding unit. This sends electronic ticks to the gauge on the dashboard. It's a fully electronic system, kind of neat for 1961. Let's get it on the car. Okay, let's put this housing on. I put a little bit of silicone on the seal there. Just want to make sure that we get no leaks because this is an area that leaks in these engines quite a lot. Just checking the oil filter assembly here. Want to make sure it's correct. So the pin goes down through the center of it. Then we have a spring at the bottom, a washer, a felt washer, what they call the pressure plate. If we look at the shop manual, it goes this way with the indent towards the filter housing. And at the end here, it's hard to see, there's a small circlip that holds it on. All right, got the filter fully installed. You can see it sticks quite a ways out from the engine block. Got to get that sander on there. That's what that piece of tape's doing on there. Now, while I was in here, I buttoned up some other things. One of them was the starter. I just hooked that up to that long cable, which runs over to the solenoid on the other side. And I also did the tube here, the return tube for the heater that runs to the water pump, installed that. Also cleaned off the surface for the distributor plate there. That's how it gets ground. So I like to clean that off as much as I can. And yeah, I think we're ready for the carbs. If you look, they're over on the bench over there, all rebuilt by specialist Reese Kent. Let's put them on the car. Up. What's holding me up? There it is. Look at that intake system on there. Triple SU. All that aluminum shining back at us. Isn't it a thing of beauty? Now I want to talk about the cosmetics of this all a bit. And that's pretty apparent here that the car bodies themselves have been left untouched, just cleaned up. And I think the rebuilder is under the impression that that's the way these things left the factory. I'm not sure. What, is, what does everybody think? Do we have any pictures that show proof that this is the way they looked when they were delivered? I'm not sure. To get these smooth finishes on aluminum, I think they have to be polished, but I may be wrong. So yeah, that was one interesting choice. They do look a little out of place, I have to say, with all this other polished aluminum right next to it. Now there's another thing, and that's plating. So some of the hardware here has been nickel plated. 
You see the accelerator linkage here? I can tell it's been nickel plated because it kind of has that beige look to it. And that's really indicative of like brass era cars I see down at Pebble Beach. I see nickel everywhere. I see nickel plated radiators. And then some of the hardware here, I don't quite know. Has it just been plated or cleaned up on the wire wheel? I'm unsure. Now, as with any restoration that kind of aborted or ran out of money, there's always things that get left behind. And one of them was this coolant tube. We can see here, it's not attached. So I'm gonna have to deal with that, put some gaskets in there, seal it up with silicone for sure. Looks like I need a thermostat here as well. There's nothing in there. This is the temperature sender. I guess we'll try the original one, see how good it works, if we can pull a focus. And the spout at the end of the coolant tube needs to be buttoned up as well painted or refinished, I'm unsure. So yeah, just a few things, get this intake system 100%, but yeah, it's coming together. Okay, I've been having fun in this engine bay, hooking up the carbs, I got the splash shield in, you can see it there, but I gotta switch gears a little bit. Jeff Chrysler from Rightway Heritage Trimming is on his way, and we are gonna resurrect this interior. You can see it's been all blown apart for the transmission tunnel, so we gotta get that in. Got to get these seats out and get the leather treatment on the seats. We can have a look at what our floor mats look like and our kick panels look like. Yeah, this should be pretty interesting. Uh, let's get these seats out of here. Okay, let's take this seat out. Careful, easy does it. There it is. See the maquette on the back. Let's get you got the console done. I got the console for you. Amazing. Yeah. So I've been busy at work, uh, oh, nice. taking out all the interior, doing a survey. Cool. So what do you think of that console? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's in great shape. Yeah. So you re-glued it. Can you show us the underside? Yep. So re glued the original upholstery back around the metalwork there. Put the original rubber back original in Original rubbers back in there, isn't that cool? Yeah, I cleaned everything just with some uh, nice. simple green. It's nice. Kind of mild. Uh, Wonderful. It came up much nicer. Yeah, looks good, thank you. Yeah. See, so I was just about to do a survey of the interior. Why don't we have a look at what we're working with here? Okay, just emptied the cockpit here. I haven't cleaned it up. It shows that everything's all original. And there's lots of little details to see. On the floor, there's definitely some sort of tar paper down there on top of the original paint. You can see there was a texture on it. Right here, there's a bit of a texture. And these seat belts look pretty old. I don't know if they're factory fit, but they have a nice anchor point, that's for sure. I think somebody's been in here and ripped the tar paper and tried to reseal or something. Maybe water was getting in. I don't think this is original. I'll grab my light. Now down there in that kick panel, it looks like there were two layers of three quarter jute before the actual vinyl material was put down, which is pretty interesting. That's a lot of sound deadening material for a sports car. You see the trimming level here, the way the stitching's done on the kick. And actually there's a, if I go in here, there's a cut right there at the bonnet release. They didn't actually punch out the hole, but it looks like they cut it out. And Jeff, you were saying the stitching was pretty interesting on this, right? Well, it's machine bound. It's not hand rolled binding like you typically see on a lot of this stuff. And then we'll go to the back here. A lot of vinyl. There's these little pockets there. And yeah, this rear parcel area, little rubber buffers on there. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Other than, yeah, time to clean it up, eh? Now on the bench here, I have the original factory fit radio and the console. You can see the vinyl's peeling away a bit. But maybe, uh, can you flip it over, Jeff? We can show everybody what the speakers look like. And the radio console there. What does it say? It doesn't say anything, I don't see a make. It says made in England down there in the model number, number 602. See what the speakers look like? 
Now inside the car, there was lots of little stuff I found. I found all the screws for the transmission tunnel. We'll see that on the floor. The original shift knob with his lock nut, the ashtray and surround, which isn't actually in tan. It looks like it's originally trimmed in black. Now also lots of little trinkets. There was actually the tire gauge there, the original Dunlop tire gauge out of the toolkit. That's pretty cool. There was a movie ticket and this is really cool. Here's a pencil that was in the, underneath in the console area. It looks like it's from the factory there. It says London on it. So that's pretty neat. Now go over to the floor here. There's that console that Jeff just uh, tidied up for us. Isn't that looking lovely? But we have the seats. They're gonna need to be cleaned and treated with some hide food for sure. You can see the color of the gray inside the seats. And some of the upholstery here. The carpet seen better days. I think that, it, that we can clean it up though. And underneath the floor mats was really heavy jute. See a three quarter jute in there. And this is the transmission cover itself. It's fiberglass, white. It just goes down with some simple screws. Pretty feeble thing really. I can see why they changed the metal later on. And there's the um, pads that go underneath the seat, the vinyl pads. This is the tunnel pocket that goes on the driver's side of the transmission tunnel. And it goes in with two snaps there so you can get access to the dipstick and whatnot. You see the back side of the seats here, this maquette, is that what it's called, Jeff? Maquette? Maquette, yeah. Maquette. Looks like a bit of a wool cloth maquette, really. Held up really nice. So the plan here is to really just clean this up, keep this car original, put every piece of upholstery right back where it belongs. Jeff's gluing that sill upholstery down. Got the transmission cover in. It's not a very heavy duty transmission cover. I can see where they made it out of metal, but it's back in there with just those small screws around the extremity. I'm gonna unpeel the onion. Gotta put it back together and make it look like a car again. Look at that, all that original carpet back in place. Thanks so much, Jeff. Anytime. It's pretty neat putting the old carpet back in place. Yeah, it's a pleasure working on these original cars. Yeah, it's totally, it's uh, neat to see it going back together and clean and get that console you did back in here. That'll look really nice and that radio in there. Yeah. Can't wait to do that, that's next. Awesome, well, thanks for your work. Thanks for dropping by and if every, if any, <laughs> And if anybody wants to keep up with you, it's Right Way Heritage Trimming, Jeff Kreiser on YouTube, right? That's correct. And you have a Austin Healy restoration undergoing. Yep. Give so it like the N1. Yeah. Follow me at a detail enthusiast or rightwayheritagetrim.com. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. His YouTube's pretty awesome. If you want to see the way original BN1 should be done, go check out Jeff's YouTube. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Next up, I want to put this radio console in the car. It's one of my favorite parts of the interior, along with the center console. Now we can tell this is original aluminum because it has kind of a rough texture in between the dots. See that? Uh, I don't think the reproduction material has that. And it just, it's made kind of in a Jaguar way. We can still see glue from when they glued the piping on from the factory. It wasn't made perfect, just functional. See what the speaker grills look like here chrome surround and it looks like uh, maybe an aluminum grill. Now flip it upside down. I've cleaned this all up since we saw it last and there's definitely some cool details to check out. These speakers here, they say made in England by RNA for Smith's radio mobile, which is cool. If we see on the other side here, we can actually see the tag, the RNA tag right on the speaker itself. And then the, you can see the radio mobile bottom just cleaned it up, it was pretty dusty. It's a model 602. Now I think this is all original factory fit. The reason being is that there were capacitors in the engine bay that were built into the wiring harness and I see this 
throughout the Jaguar range, right into the 70s, these capacitors put into cars originally fitted with radios. So yeah, let's put it in the car. So close. So close. <sighs> Gotta be so careful with this original upholstery. Oh, yes, that brings a smile to my face. Look at this interior, everybody. If there was ever any doubt to preserve this car, I think this interior really answers the question. I am so happy we didn't rip all this interior out and replace it with modern substitutes. It is absolutely amazing. So I got this center console in. It had three chrome machine screws holding it down. So those are back in place. I also put down the upholstery underneath the seats. I noticed it was set up incorrectly. Luckily, there was a bit of a witness mark on these uh, pads, and I could see where the thick washers went. Now, these seat tracks themselves are in exceptional condition. Look at the original cadmium on there. Didn't need to refinish them. Most of the time, these things are a rusty mess and need replacement. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. What do you guys think? Okay, before the seats go in, I'm gonna moisturize them with some leather conditioner. I'm using this German leather conditioner, pretty high-end leather conditioner, and that'll soften up this leather before it goes in. Just give us one last opportunity to really analyze what this beautiful original leather looks like. Untarnished, this is what you call a perfect patina, I would say. And I got this seat cushion upside down. We can definitely see it has burlap in it. The wood's painted black. There's a bit of a trim around here and all tacked in as well. Spent some time on the floor mats. These are the original 1962 floor mats. They're going right back in. They were quite soiled, so I had to shampoo them. But given their age and the usual state and condition of floor mats, I think these things are absolutely wonderful. You can see the way that the stitching's done on here. Now if I flip it over, there's also an extra bit of jute in here. Maybe that was to make up for the dished. This is one of the first cars that have the dished footwells. Now, and these things are gonna sit on these big pieces of three quarter inch jute that I'll put right back in. Look at that, got the seats and the floor mats in there. The interior is complete, original, amazing. I love it. Yeah, I love the original shift knob in there. There's not a single part in here that isn't original to the car. It's pretty amazing, really, when you think about it. Glove box looks nice inside. Shifter knob's nice, original. We saw the radio console. Now, one thing I put in new is the cigarette um, ashtray. I get it open there. And what's interesting about the ashtray kind of uh, support here is it's, it's trimmed in black and that's totally original. Kind of has a neat contrast though. I think it kind of works. A lot of times we see that just trimmed in the vinyl color that the rest of the interior is in. Yeah, but really lovely. Best part of this car by a long shot, the interior, and I didn't really do anything to it other than clean it up. <laughs> Look at that. <whistles> okay, well, let's get back to work. Next up, I wanna do the heater box. I just finished painting up the main metal components for it, and I'm really passionate about paint. I like to use a HVLP gun with urethane paint and get it right, getting it look nice and professional. 
Now, if there's any doubt about the finish, this is definitely high gloss black, and I'm pretty sure that's what Jaguar used. I have the original tray here that goes on the underside of the motor. Um, we could definitely see a gloss black on this tray. I'm pretty sure almost everything Jaguar sprayed was gloss black and any flat black or satin black you see on a Jaguar is probably from the black oxide. Speaking of coatings, I got all of the hardware here in cadmium. New heater matrix ready to go. Got the fan. I even got the three-way connector to hook it up to the harness. Uh, yeah, let's get the scare and put it in the car. Love that heater box. I think it's the shiniest part of the car now. Got this little latch, spring loaded latch, which opens and closes it. Loop clamp underneath for the main wiring harness that kind of goes in with the mount here. Still got to wire it up actually. Now I wanted to button up all the area in behind the heater box before it went in. So lots of little stuff to see here. Got the coolant valve with the original hoses. Accelerator pivot, made sure that was all good. This limits the accelerator on both sides, the accelerator throw. The speedo cable has a small clip here on the bell housing of the trans. Yeah, there's lots to look at. Uh, the vacuum line, I wanted to make sure it was routed correctly. You see it goes through a loop clamp here, loop clamp here. Then it has this 9 16th original clamp there. Oh, I'm gonna tighten that up a little more for sure. Uh, these elbow hoses are really not easy to put in, especially with the old style clamps. I cheated down there, there's a zebra down in there. And yeah, I think this area is looking really nice, but there's more parts to put on the car. Maybe let's do the exhaust next. Got those original exhaust manifolds installed with all the original hardware and the brass nuts, even the thick spacer washer and the dipstick bracket. Now I like to get my down pipes installed before I actually really snug these up to the cylinder head. And I was just making a survey of my exhaust components here. I have this Bell stainless steel made in England system that I absolutely love, but I need the flanges. So that's gonna be in the next video, we'll install these. I wanna move on, I wanna get the brake reservoirs on there. It's nice to get this all installed before the brake reservoirs go in, but uh, we're just gonna have to do it the other way around this time. Next up, I wanna get the reservoirs on the car. And there's a lot of bits and pieces to this. It took a while to get organized. I'll just go through it briefly here. We have the bottles themselves, they're plastic. These are the original bottles. I cleaned them out thoroughly, used a bell brush down in here. Actually, I cleaned them about three times, blew them out with air because hydraulic systems can't have any contaminants in them. Now, s g Barrett here, they make a really nice replica bottle. I was gonna use some of them, but then I found out that the, the diameter at the top here is slightly wider than original, so I couldn't use the original caps. I'm trying to make this car as original as possible, so I had to clean the bottles. There was no other way to do it. And there was just other detailed differences. Like you look at the clutch lid here, the replica one's way taller, doesn't have the same shape. And I wanted to keep these, you can't buy these new. And I just wanted to have the car look original. And so that's the way we're gonna go with the bottles. They had these um, flexible lines below them. I think these were Dunlop that with these yellow dashes, these are the original ones. And just to recreate that, I took some uh, lines and took a paint pen and painted them yellow. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not usually an artificial kind of guy like that. I don't like to paint, for instance, silver, trying to emulate fits and finishes that I don't have. But this was the only option. I think it's great. I have the original clamps here, the 5 8 clamps, so that's nice. The holder themselves and all the hardware, this was all silver cadmium. And I got some of the other hardware here. Now this is gonna be a really interesting point of contention for everybody. I'm putting back on the original asbestos. Look at that asbestos, it's going right back on the car. You know, after 60,000 miles, it's held up really well and I think it's perfectly safe to put on the car. The owner's fine with it too. And it looks pretty good on the other side here. Not all rusty and pitted. And you can't emulate this, the way it looks, the texture, everything about it, it's totally original and it's going back on. So yeah, let's put it back on the car. Now what's interesting here is I can see the witness marks 
on the engine subframe right here and here so I know exactly where this thing goes on. Okay, got the bottles all in there. I'm super happy. I persevered and cleaned the originals with the original caps. It's just so much more authentic. And I think that's really in keeping and fitting with the way we're doing this car. Yeah, looking lovely. All right, well that does it for this episode. I think we'll get her running in the next one. But until next time, thanks for watching everybody. As always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. All right, that's it. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.